Hey, what's going on guys? John Fibonacci here. Welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to low risk, high reward intraday setups. So I'm excited for this video because I feel like this is a really good one. This is what I look to do for the indices, not every single day, but most trading days. This is what I look for. Low risk, high reward intraday setups. So first things first, we always want to make sure that we start with top down analysis. So the higher time frames are going to be your weekly and your daily. You could even include the monthly time frame in there. I usually only use the monthly time frame for stocks, but that can be thrown in there too, down to the one hour, 15 minute, five minute, and even the one minute, if you like the one minute entries. So why top down analysis? Because it ensures that we don't miss something on the higher time frame. Great setups happen when the smaller time frames align with the higher time frames. Weekly and daily time frames also tell us the current market conditions. Are we in expansion? Are we in consolidation? And even seasonality conditions, if applicable. Not every month is going to have um, super strong seasonality conditions. Those are usually only going to be select few months of the year of what you're trading. So like the S&P, you know, it's going to have a few select months that are going to be stronger in one direction more so than others. Same like with the metals and currencies. So this is the micro E-mini S&P 500 on a daily time frame. This is the chart from the previous slide. Just a little bit more zo zoomed in so you can see what it is that we're looking at. So take a look at the most recent few days of price action. Are we in expansion? Are we in consolidation? What type of conditions are we in? So to me, I would consider this consolidation. It is expanding to the upside long term and in a general sense, but the most recent few days haven't really seen the strongest expansion to the upside. We do end up consolidating. And so the smaller time frames, we want to note that that those are the conditions that we're in because that's going to be important for intraday price action. So once I know the conditions, especially if we're in consolidation, one of the things I'm going to look for is liquidity. I also like to look at that as manipulation. That's what I believe it is. And that comes in the form of many things, a few of which are equal highs or equal lows, previous days high, previous days low, previous weekly high, previous weekly low, and things of that nature. So Areas of liquidity are great for targets as well as potential reversals. The higher the time frame, the more important the price level becomes. The higher time frame, higher the liquidity, right? Traders like us, we're retail traders, we trade on smaller time frames, whereas the bigger money, smart money is going to operate on bigger time frames. Banks, hedge funds, institutions are going to operate on bigger time frames, and that's where a lot of the bigger money is at. Another reason we want to incorporate top-down analysis, but once we come down after we know our conditions, I like to look for areas of liquidity, i.e. manipulation. So here's the chart on the last slide, but zoomed in so we can see what's going on here. So again, the S&P, but this time, instead of a daily, we've worked down now to the 15-minute time frame. So do you see any areas of liquidity? Do you see any price action that would indicate price manipulation? So on this particular chart, to me, we actually have two instances where you have a short-term high right here where the market rallies up and trades away from that, but then also comes up a second time and then trades lower. So both of these instances, especially that second one, to me is a run on liquidity. To me is classic manipulation. Hey, real quick, guys, if you got value so far, drop a like on the video. I would greatly appreciate that. Thanks. All right. So after the manipulation, what I'd like to see is a break of structure, change in market structure, shift in market structure. There's all types of names. Um, the simplest I think would be break of structure. Okay. There's a lot of names for this stuff, but change in market structure, 
whatever have you. So in other words, or in another sense, a large shift in the opposing direction. So if we've been trading higher, then we want to see a break of structure to the downside or a shift in market structure to the downside. Okay, a large shift in the opposing direction. So if price has shown a, a convincing willingness to trade in the opposite direction, then price may have created a high or a low and is ready to shift from bullish to bearish or bearish to bullish. This move should be clear and obvious. Okay, if you have to force it, like a relationship, probably not going to end well. It has to be clear and it has to be obvious. And trust me, when you look at charts enough and you see the move in real time, you'll know that that's the move, that that is the large shift in the opposing direction or your break of structure. So again, we zoom in on the chart so that way we can take a look at it. Do you see a shift or change or break in market structure? Do you see a convincing move in the opposing direction? We'll take a look. The market has been rallying, retracement, and it's been rallying. And then we get a movement lower, retracement, and then another move lower. So those lows, right? This low, you have a higher low. And you have a higher low here, but then you have a lower low right in there. So that right there is your move. There is your shift in market structure, break in market structure, whatever have you. Okay. It's an obvious shift. Okay. You see the conviction with those two red candles right there, break of market structure. It clearly has traded below this low. It's closed below this low on a one minute time frame. And that's what that looks like. It's not always going to be this clear, but this is a prime example. Uh, very recently, by the time this video comes out, it won't it won't be all that recent. But this um, was very very recent, and it was pretty clean. This is what that looks like. So after your shift break change in market structure, what we're going to look for is a retracement. So this is going to be the low risk entry, the low risk entry. If the price has likely set the high or the low from manipulation, then price is unlikely to trade above the high or below the low again. The retracement we are looking for is the opportunity to get into the market before the majority of the next leg of price movement. The retracement should be logical in terms of location. Think Fibonacci 50%, 61%, even 786%. Retracements and or concepts that are near those Fibonacci levels. Okay, so it's not the Fibonacci, you know, that that's all that wonderful. It's the logic of buying low and selling high or shorting high and covering low. So if we have a concept that is at ideally 618%, I put 50% in here because on the small time frames, 50% can be useful, but uh, outside of like one minute and five minute, 618 is probably gonna be one of your uh, better retracement levels, okay? So we're looking for concepts at or near those retracements. Okay, so if we come back to this chart, we can see our break of structure, right? So when we have a retracement, do we have anything in, in here that we can look to enter off of? And if this high right here was from manipulation, that's why manipulation is important because price can sometimes go back up a second time. But a lot of the times if the high has been set, the market's not going to trade above that high. Or if the low has been set, it won't trade below that recent low. So if we want a super tight stop loss or a low risk, right, then we can have our stop at this high. But where's the entry going to be? Where do you think before I show you? Where do you think it's going to be? Well, if we short that gap, okay, this gap between these two red candlesticks right here, if we short that as a retracement, and if, again, the manipulation is our high, if this is a fractal high as well, whether it's a three candle or a five candle, if that's our stop loss, that's really only a stop of about three, maybe three and a half points on the S&P. So that is a low risk, okay? And we can see that the market... It does spend a few minutes there, but then it dramatically trades away from it and continues lower. So in hindsight, obviously 
this is a low risk, high reward setup. But how do you know it's going to be high reward? Well, we framed the low risk part, but now we get into the high reward part. What we need is a high probability target. So what is that? What is a high probability target? Well, I asked myself, where is price likely to go next? That's probably the number one question that we all want to know. Where is price likely to go next? Well, this is what's going to frame the high reward. If price turns here, where is it likely to go? What is price likely going to reach next? A one to three risk reward setup, okay? Those are my minimum requirement to take a trade. If it's less than one to three, I'm probably not going to take it. Very rarely do I take it, um, but one to three ideally or greater is what I strive to look for. So anything above a one to three is good, but it's not required. Also, it's not about the highest RR trades. It's about quality setups. The risk reward needs to make sense so we can allow the math to play out favorably. Mark Douglas talks about series of trades, not you know, put all this emphasis on one particular trade. And if our math, you know, math is very easy. If you take good risk reward setups, then if you have a decent strike rate, then the math is just going to play out in your favor. And that's what we want. All right. So here's that same chart, but zoomed in, you can see that I still have the markup on here, the gap and the gap lines, right? From that one minute time frame, those are still on there. So now that we have a five minute zoomed out a little bit more, now we can frame our high probability target. Now the high probability target I usually have before I enter a trade. Um, so, you know, in the video, it comes after for me to explain it to you, but usually this is one of the first things that I set up. Where's the price likely to go? And then I followed the other steps, but you know, now that, we're here in this portion of the video and I'm walking it through you step by step. What is the next thing that the market is going to reach for? What do you think it's going to reach for? And there's no wrong answer because there's actually multiple answers. There's multiple good answers on this chart. I'm only going to show you like one or two, but there are good, um, downside targets available specifically for this five minute chart. What do you think they are? Well, for me, it's usually going to be equal lows or low resistant lows or obvious lows. And you see that right here annotated with the eyeball. Okay. And you can see that the market clearly trades down to those lows and even continues lower. Now, if you were thinking there's an imbalance right here, that would be acceptable. If you're thinking there's a gap right here, that's also acceptable. But when I see lows, I usually will target those. These are good targets for partialing, but usually not good for collapsing the trade or the final uh, TP for shorts. I usually like to take final TP at some lows, but this gap or this imbalance still would have been pretty good partials. And an entry near 41.86, that gaps at 41.6, under 41.70. So that still would have been over 10 points at that gap. That's still a good take partial, but a final collapse would be either below this low or even further down. And we'll get to that in just a minute as well. Okay. So this is what I mean when I say that sometimes price can continue to run even after you've collapsed your trade, which is why it's cool to take partials on the way down. But if you hold even just a small portion of your trade, it can really, really continue lower. So look at that. We were framing setups way up in here at the 4188, 86 area. And price went down all the way to the 4140s. That's a potential 45 point move. Now, don't think that I'm telling you, you're going to see a one to 20 risk reward every day. That's I'm not telling you that at all. And I'm not saying that you would have caught a 45 point move here. But I do want to explain to you that sometimes you can end up catching bigger moves, even if it's not your full position, which is a pretty good thing. All right. So at that same time, what I actually elected to trade was the Dow. Now I based that off of a 15 minute time frame. I could have 
probably went down to the five minute. I don't think I liked it. I don't think I liked the price action on the five minute. And I just chose to stay on the uh, 15 minute time frame. Now, this was the same day as the S&P. So instead of shorting the S&P or shorting the NASDAQ, I actually look for shorts on the Dow Jones. So walk through the same process, the same process, uh, waiting for manipulation, waiting for a shift, change, break in market structure, something that's clear and obvious, and then having a high probability target. So here's a little bit more information for you. Same Dow Jones 15 minute time frame, just um, more data so you can actually see what's on the chart. So when we talk about manipulation, it's not always a super zoomed in chart. Sometimes we have to zoom out a little bit. That's why we do top down anyway, so you should already be aware, right? But if you can't do top down, at least zoom out a little bit on those smaller time frames and see yesterday's high, yesterday's low, or if you're trading New York, maybe London's high and London's low or Asia high, Asia low, stuff like that, right? What's clear, what's obvious? Where's the liquidity at? That's what we need to know. So zooming out on this chart, you get a little bit more information to work with here for the Dow Jones. So what do we actually do here? Well, this high is swept here and then it's swept again. Okay, we actually have a higher high here market dramatically trades lower it leaves behind that imbalance and then the market rallies up and the bodies are respecting that imbalance now what i will tell you is this um i didn't put the chart in here that's my mistake but that higher high on the s p that i showed you on the last few slides we actually have a lower high here on the dow jones okay so the dow jones was weak it couldn't trade above this high like the s p did so that signifies weakness on the side of the Dow Jones. So I spent a little bit of time in drawdown, but then look at this beautiful 15 minute candle straight down. So new low, that could be a partial. And there was something longer term I was aiming for. We never got it. Um, but then we have uh, a newer low here in the afternoon session. That was a second partial there near the low of the day. And then on the way higher, I ended up closing the remainder of the position before the end of the day and before the market uh, decided to trade higher. I figured we'd probably retrace higher. I didn't want to be a part of it, so I went ahead and closed the short uh, right in this area. Okay, But that was essentially the idea Okay, behind it. Weakness on the side of Dow Jones. So in summary, we discussed top-down analysis, liquidity, i.e. manipulation, a change in market structure, retracements, high probability targets for low risk, high reward setups. I encourage you, courage is a spelling mistake. I always have to have those in there. I encourage you to back test these ideas. Um, don't expect to understand this easily or quickly. Remember your other trading tools and risk management parameters. You don't need small time frames like the one minute or the five minute if you don't want them or if you don't have the screen time available to utilize them. I just showed you the 15 minute and that was what I traded. That was what I stayed on the other day and still framed a one to three risk reward. So 15 minute charts and one hour charts can work well too. Price is fractal anyway. What happens on small time frames happens on larger time frames. So you also don't need super high risk reward trades. As I mentioned earlier, we aren't here to trade for social media. Can we find one to tens? Can we find one to twenties? Well, sure we can, but there's a lot that goes into that. We're not holding the full position to that. Um, and we're not trying to trade with two pip stop losses and things like that. Now on the S and P, can you frame trades that are two or three point risk? Absolutely. You can, but just be careful. Okay. Low risk doesn't mean no risk. Okay. Every time you take a trade, there is risk involved. So just be mindful of that. And don't forget that you can become a member today. You can get a sniper badge next to your name and chat emojis to spice up the chat. When we analyze the markets four times every week here on YouTube live. Also, you get access to member only community posts and more. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you the next one.